Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming here. I know that there are a lot of interesting sessions going on, and thank you for choosing us. Um, I am Christy Progri. I finished my studies for international affairs and diplomacy. I'm uh, the Open Labs chairwoman. I'm a Mozilla rep also, Mozilla outreach intern, and tech speakers. Well, I'm deeply involved in all, almost all Mozilla's uh, projects that are there, and I'm also part of the uh, hacker space. Uh, hello, I'm Yona. Uh, so both of us are from Albania. I'm currently finishing my uh, studies on business informatics at the University of Tirana. And uh, both of us are part of uh, Open Labs Hackerspace, that is the first hackerspace in Albania, promoting only open source projects. And the first project that I've been involved, as you can see uh, from my head, <laughs> is Fedora. Uh, that, and I became the first Fedora ambassador in Albania. But after that, uh, I wanted to be part also to other open source projects like um, LibreOffice, for example. Uh, that's why I'm a TDF member now. And at Fedora, I'm part of uh, different sub-projects that we have. And lately, uh, I'm a Rails Girl Summer of Code uh, uh, intern. I will talk about it even later to uh, give you some more information about it. Okay, in the first part of the presentation, we're going to tell on how to build up the community. We have tried and we, we together thought to put some historical and political uh, sphere into the presentation so it's, it will be easier for you to understand that the community actually, it's important also to know that how was the history of, of a country. So, is here anyone who know who is this guy? Okay. Well, Enveroja rocked Albania for 50 years in a very deep communism. We were totally isolated from what happened in the world and we didn't know anything. We thought that we were the best and we thought that we were the greatest in the world and that was the reason that everything is going on and all the planets were how they were. So, um, Enveroja kept our country in a total, in a total is, um, isolated sphere and uh, like, as every communist country, as you might also know, is that the collectivism and the volunteer thing is a very, plays a very big role in the society. And in 1919, the things changed, and we call it now democracy, but we are not very sure about it. They changed the name, I think. And in uh, 1990, we uh, did like the first free elections and uh, the first, you know, fr free president and the prime minister was into the country and we thought that we're free. And a lot of guys went to the main streets of Tirana to, to be like the heroes and to, to pull down actually everything that Enveroja built it for a couple of years. Um, so from the um, extreme collective work, we went to um, extreme indiv individualism and um, it was not done in a very smooth way because it was like very straightforward and we didn't have also the time to recover from everything that happened in the communism and to, to get up like even stronger. So this went really fast and that affected a lot uh, in the society and how things were really going. In a country with a, a cooperative way of working background, collaborative software development should be easy, right? We thought actually the same that having the background that people were very wor into like working with each other like in the communism were because that's what the system told them. But we thought that when it comes to the volunteers or when it comes to the contributions for free, uh, the Albanian people or people coming from post-communist country would find it easier and it would be better because they already had something before and they would know now to take all the benefits of it actually. Uh, when Open Labs first was created, it, it was like on 2012, uh, we thought that it would be way easier to get people, but it was so hard because people in our age, their parents told them don't work for free or don't contribute because that's what also in communism told us. Like they did the same, but nothing good happens from it. So when we first started the hacker space, it was a very new thing. Like no one knew what the hacker space was and especially like for the FLOSS projects. Uh, people were not really into the tech and especially women or especially uh, students. 
And when we first created it, people thought that we were that they were just going to contribute and they will that they would take actually nothing in return and it will be just a waste of time. And it was so hard to convince them. Like we started the hugger space with only four people, like presenting to them like the major uh, projects that we did, like for example Mozilla or uh, or Linux, Wikipedia, and OpenStreetMap. And now we are growing in and creating the one of the biggest conferences in Albania related to the uh, floss uh, technologies and softwares. Uh, so Yona is now going to present you related to the women, and we will also collaborate with each other during the presentation. So until now, uh, we were hearing uh, how good it is to uh, have, a, let's say, a local community, uh, how to build it, and also how to maintain uh, the spirit uh, so the community can uh, grow even more. Uh, but if we see these communities, uh, where are women part of it? And uh, if we see uh, mostly related to FLOSS projects, a uh, survey that has been uh, done in 2002 found that only 1.1 percentage of the contributors were women. And a more recent one uh, in 2013 uh, found that uh, only 11 percentage of FLOSS contributors were women. So as we can see, the number, uh, the number has been increased, but even though uh, it's really a uh, low number because it's only uh, 11 percentage of them. And uh, if we see uh, at this 11 percentage, only 1.5 percentage of them are developers. So this is even worse when we hear this number. And uh, if we see the GitHub users that uh, has more than uh, 10 contributions from just a random sample, for example, only 5.4% uh, uh, of them uh, are female. And uh, among these women who joined uh, the tech industry, let's say that only 56% uh, of them live uh, by mid-career. And if we compare this with, uh, main, uh, with men, it's the double uh, uh, the attrition rate uh, if we compare both of them. So if we see this uh, diagram here, uh, as we, as we can see that the number, uh, so this is compared with the number of uh, repositories uh, in, uh, on GitHub, the percentage of uh, females, it's really low. And uh, the number decreases when the contributions uh, increases. So something is going wrong, right? So even if uh, I have also some other statistics from the PyCon conferences, so the local ones, so uh, from 2011 uh, until 2015, uh, if we see the number of the speakers, uh, at the beginning was only one percentage of them, and now we have uh, speakers, let's say 33 percentage of them are women, so the number have, uh, has been increased a lot. Uh, but uh, the, uh, 2014 and 15, uh, the number is the same, the, so the percentage is the same. So we have some issues here. The first one that uh, uh, we can say is the invisibility. So this is related because when we are uh, inside a community, when we are uh, a part of it, sometimes people tend uh, to say statements like they are not part of uh, the community, like they are not there. Even if, uh, of course, they are part of it, they are trying really hard to be active. And on the other hand, uh, we have the ex exceptionalism, that it's uh, when people, so sometimes they tend, when, we see, when they see women, they are like, oh, are you a developer? Are you sure? Or they, they uh, see statements like they are a really special creatures, something really rare. But try to not do uh, none of them, because it's really uh, offensive towards uh, the women. Uh, we have the gender essentialism and social expectations. So uh, this is related uh, because mostly when we think about uh, women and men, uh, we say that mostly they are good at, uh, so I, I mean in general, they are, mean, uh, they are good at uh, working at house, doing uh, uh, 
let's say, chores, and men are mostly with, uh, they are good at technologies. But even if we see inside the technologies, uh, inside the, uh, the world of informatics, for example, mostly they will let to them uh, do like the community manager, uh, the documentation part, and boys will do uh, the, will, they will be the developers. Okay, of course that they can do it, but maybe it's not something that they, are, they want to do. Maybe they want to be the developers and not the community manager. So try uh, to help them find what is good for them, what they like, and just let them do what they want. And the last one is the sexualized environment. Sometimes uh, when they see, uh, let's say, girls part of a community, mostly they see them like a sexual object, and that's all. But of course that they are there because they, w they like technology, they want to be part of it, and they can be really good developers. Uh, on the other hand, what we have done until now, and when I say we, uh, I mean different communities, uh, we have different initiatives um, that, are, uh, that have been a lot of years that uh, has been created, and uh, they are doing uh, a lot of efforts to try to have more women as part of these communities. Um. One of them is also WOMOS, which is a project that um, Mozilla is um, having to, and it's composed with numbers of, of um, women or people from underrepresented groups to feel more, um, to, to contribute more into the open source projects. It's uh, mainly dedicated to improving women's visibility and involvement in free and uh, open source softwares and to Mozilla. And it's uh, free, so everyone who wants can participate on it. There are also some channels that you can find and have more information related to uh, this projects, like in uh, the website, in Facebook, IRC, Telegram, and also the mailing list. And there is also the Fedora project that they have a specific target only for the women. Uh, so uh, Fedora women, uh, it's like the, something uh, the same with WOMOS, but it's uh, for the women that we have part of our community and not only, of course. Uh, so the mission statement that we thought in the beginning is to provide a forum for all women in the Fedora community because sometimes for them it's easier when they are part of a, of a forum that will be only with girls and uh, no one will say there what is this stupid question for example or just google it. So to avoid this part that's why we wanted to create a forum uh, only for them. Uh, provide a stronger voice for the uh, women uh, of the Fedora community. So if you have a problem, you just need to speak up and not try to avoid it and uh, behave like nothing has happened. And avoid segregation because, of course, uh, that we, want, we don't want to separate them. Uh, absolutely not. We just want uh, both of them can collaborate with each other and uh, making the community even bigger and better. And what's most important is to have fun. So, uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, this uh, sub-project that we have is open to any women who is looking for a supportive group uh, within the Fedora community and not only. Uh, but as we wanted to have a more inclusive community, we thought uh, to open a new one uh, that is called the Diversity Team. Uh, here we had uh, also um, the Dry Activity Day related to only that, to think what we will do as a team and how we'll, uh, we work on different uh, tasks uh, on the future. So that's why we have our mailing list where we discuss dif different things uh, about uh, different subjects that people can have or a question that they need to, to know. How you can contribute, for example, uh, you can find us on Pajur, uh, that it's a platform, let's say, similar with GitHub, but uh, we use it only for Fedora. And of course that we have our B-weekly meeting, uh, so for example, now uh, we have our weekly meeting, uh, so each Wednesday on our channel on IRC, uh, Fedora Diversity. So um, those are uh, two of the initiatives, but there are even more. Uh, also other projects like uh, Wikipedia has uh, another one. 
that is called Women in Red. And uh, what is one of their goals? Let's say they are trying to uh, add more articles, more biographies for different women around the, uh, around the world, for different countries. Uh, so more people can know their history, what they have done, and etc. So uh, something else that we can uh, show to other women and they can be part and start even from the beginning, let's say, are some different opportunities where one of them is uh, outreach, uh, where even uh, Christy was part of it. And yep. Outreach is actually an intern um, that is only for women and from, for people coming from underrepresented groups to contribute and to start also to getting involved in the FLOSS communities. I was a part of it um, this, um, the last round actually. I was working with the Mozilla team for the uh, participation, and with the participation team uh, for the diversity and um, the inclusion. So it's, as I said, it's a three month um, internship and everyone can feel free to join. It's also Google Summer of Code, which is almost the same with um, Outreachy, but it happens only uh, during the summer and it uh, actually it's even for women and even for men, it's like more, um, more inclusive, let's say. Uh, uh, students can work within this uh, project for like three months and it's only during the summer. Um, in the beginning, they can apply, like interested students, and uh, accepted students spend the summer coding, and there is also a mentor who is uh, mentoring them. And uh, then the, they can submit the code and they can share it so everyone can see how, how did it work and how was all their work. And Yona is also part of the Rails Girls, which is also an internship. So, uh, Rails Girls Summer of Code, uh, it's an internship that even I saw it uh, this year. Uh, the applications happened uh, during uh, sept uh, February. Uh, so, uh, it, it's a, let's say, scholarship only for girls, so they can be even more part of different open source projects and uh, they can uh, do something there uh, during summer and they can code because it's only for coding uh, and they can be part of different projects. It doesn't mean that uh, it's only for Ruby on Rails but it's also uh, related to other programming uh, languages. Uh, so uh, here are some of the projects that were listed uh, and uh, each person uh, could apply uh, at one of them. And also here you can see uh, what background you need to do, uh, what background you need to have uh, so you can be part of them. So to be part of uh, the application, uh, you needed uh, to find uh, another person uh, so you can be a team together uh, and uh, you, you need to be at the same place every day during the summer uh, and work. So uh, after finding that and also deciding with your teammate uh, which project you need to apply, and the maximum was uh, only two projects, uh, you needed to find uh, even coaches. For each project, you need uh, two coaches that can help you. Uh, and of course, that they need to know more about the project that you will be involved. Uh, and after finding the coaches, also that you will have the mentor of the project, uh, that you can uh, be part of it. So uh, the project that, uh, for example, this is my team. Uh, we called it Codeaholics, and the, uh, what we are uh, working now, uh, we are part of Nextcloud. Uh, I don't know if anyone have heard about it. Oh, nice. So Nextcloud, uh, it's similar, let's say, with Dropbox, but it's an open source alternative. Uh, first was uh, own cloud, but this one is a fork of uh, own cloud. And uh, what we are working now, uh, it's related to the contact apps and the doc uh, documentation related to the contact apps. And what we, uh, one of the, uh, let's say, uh, things that we needed to have uh, at the beginning, our background uh, was related to AngularJS. But it doesn't mean that you need to be really advanced to be part of it because you can be even a beginner and uh, you can, because uh, also during uh, this scholarship you need to learn even new things. Uh, so here are, you can see the sources that we are working, uh, students, coaches, mentor and supervisor. 
And uh, each day, uh, what we do, we, we need uh, to publish there our activity log, what we have done uh, for, each, uh, which, for each day, from Monday to Friday. And uh, this, inter this scholarship will end uh, on 13th of September. And it's a really good uh, opportunity for, uh, for girls to be part of open source uh, projects, but even to get paid. Uh, about it. So uh, we were talking until now that we don't have a lot of women part of these different communities. But how is the situation in our community uh, in Albania? So uh, here is one of the events that we do each year, uh, Ada Lovelace Day, uh, that happens uh, on October. Uh, so the first one that uh, we made, for example, uh, each of the girls that are part of uh, our community, uh, they uh, were talking about the projects that they are part of it and how is the situation at their community and how even the other girls can be part of it. Uh, another one is Mozilla Weekend. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mozilla Weekend actually was like, um, an event that we had like a tradition happening every February, but unfortunately we skipped it this year. And in this photo it's very visible that we have divided uh, men in one part and women in the other part, just for, for the audience to see how is the situation like. In this photo we are actually more women, like I, th I can think that 70% of, of the community, even generally, not, in, not only in this uh, event, but even generally in the hacker space, we have more uh, women than men. And, yep. uh, uh, and here we have Oscar, as Christy mentioned, even in the beginning, uh, is the conference that we are organizing in Albania, Open Source Conference Albania. And it's one of the biggest one in Balkan. Uh, this is a group photo from our uh, fourth edition that was this year on May. And next year we will have our fifth edition. So I think we'll be uh, even more people part of it. But uh, so as you can see the group photo, uh, most of the participants were girls, uh, even part of the organizing team. Uh, we were 12 people, mm -hmm. so eight of them were girls and the other part were boys. Uh, also uh, part of uh, most, only is something that uh, we couldn't uh, fix it, let's say, maybe next year we'll see it. Speakers, most of them were uh, boys, because most of the speakers, we had them uh, from abroad, from different open source projects, so they could be part of it. And uh, here we have a Fedora Loves Python meetup, uh, so as I mentioned, that I'm part of Fedora. At, at Fedora we have uh, even a a special group uh, only for Python people that are really into it and they like it. And as you can see even here, uh, most of the participants uh, that are part of uh, this meetup were girls. And this is, uh, let's One see, the, uh, yes, uh, that someone said uh, for our conference, because in the end we like uh, to talk with speakers and have their feedback so even other people that maybe want to come, they can just see it. So Oscar showed how girls can rock IT subjects and that free software is a special, important and empowering uh, top topic for everyone. Um, basically the main reasons that we have um, witnessed and we found out is that the educational system makes more women and helps a lot women to go into the IT subject because in Albania it's that mentality I think that the IT subjects can offer you, you can have a very good job after you finish your university for uh, informatics and also this, this is a very good like uh, reason and they like to go into those fields even because of uh, this thing, uh, the, discover, the desire to discover new things. Uh, technology didn't, didn't come to Albania as fast as it came in other very developed countries, for example in Europe or in the United States. Like, I think that the first computers in Albania were like in the beginning of 1991 or 1992, so it was quite a new thing for us and since it was new everyone wanted to go and see how the things were working, what was it and they wanted like to give it to try and to see. Um, yep, 
Also, um, we have um, we have worked on doing like some finding out some reasons on on how to encourage to encourage more women. Um, First is to recruit diversity. Uh, we think that it's very important to uh, present like the projects and the hacker space and everything in a lot of um, universities and to get more students working on it. And to create a code of conduct so everyone can feel free and can feel even more, even, even better coming in the hacker space because they know that there the chances for them to to feel bad or to have said something that it's not very proper will be low because there is a um, code of conduct is the most important i think that the very um, good thing is also to value all contributors because in the hacker space not all the contributors are from it um, fields like not all of them studied informatics or maths or science generally there are a lot of students coming from geography history um, Albanian language or other uh, universities and it's very important to value all of them even the contributors that only localize like translate the platforms into our local language we have to thank them like exactly in the same way that we give the credits to those who can code and to those who contribute in a technical side also it's um, organizing events and conference is also a very good way for them like in a way to get more involved and to see that how the community works so they can just come and start contributing since they will see that we're actually very open to everyone who wants to come and join so this was our presentation also, uh, yeah yeah, we are also starting an, an initiative, Open Diversity, which aims to collect all this kind, all the the platforms for the diversity, like Pi Ladies or uh, Womos or Fedora Women, to collect them in like one umbrella for all of them, so we can come with the same voice and we can have the same conferences or events and we can share experiences. So to sum up, this was like our presentation. We did exactly in 30 minutes. <laughs> so everyone who wants to um, ask something, please feel free. Or if you want to comment on something or anything good or anything if good you or with good. That we said. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Okay, great. So, yeah, as you said, you used uh, again half an hour, so okay. we have plenty of time for questions, and I see already several hands. So I'll go. Thank you for your talk. Um, I have two questions, if I may. Uh, the first one is, according to your own experience so far, uh, what do you think um, companies, uh, like private companies, what would be the best way uh, at a small scale to make uh, a contribution to uh, like opening IT field to women? Uh, and as an example, I run a small company, but um, the, the presence of women in the IT field in my country, I live in Belgium, uh, it's pretty hard to recruit new women in the company because the pool of women um, <coughs> achieving IT degrees is quite low. And so even though I would like to recruit more women, I don't know how uh, I could make the pool bigger. And, and so if you have any tips or stuff that we as potential employers, we could do to improve the situation. Okay, thank you. Sorry, for which country is, uh, do you find this problem? In Belgium. Mm. Do you have comments yep. on that? Yeah. Um, so thank you for your question. Um, we have actually seen also like the same um, the same thing even um, from from the other people. Uh, actually, we suggest that um, internships are a very very good way for for them to recruit because if you go in the university and you present your company there, there will be a lot of interested students and among them also women. And I think that it will be a very good start for them because they will start as an internship, which means that if they will feel a little bit insecure because it, it is like tech field and probably they feel like not very ready for it, uh, they will feel even better, I think, because they know that uh, in the company there will be people that will mentor them. 
and will help to, to grow in the, in the professional uh, field. So I think that recruiting in the universities is, is a, a very good way and also going in um, tech events or I don't know if you come from a country that there are uh, hackerspace there because um, one of the examples is, is that in our hackerspace there are a lot of students or post-graduated students that are looking for jobs and the companies that want to hire, they just send an email to the mailing list that, for example, we want 10 developers or uh, whatever like they, they need. And the uh, people from the hackerspace, they just start to apply and uh, among them, like, there are a lot of people and then join the company. Welcome. Okay, I think we are. Thank you for your talk. And also thank you for all the initiatives that you're taking in Albania. Uh, I wanted to ask, like, besides conferences, have you thought about organizing some kind of competitions as well? I'm also Albanian and what me, made me study computer science was actually taking part in the National Olympiad of Informatics, like studying for that. So don't you think competitions would also be some, like, nice initiative to take in order to encourage women to, take, yep. to study computer science? So, for example, what we have done at our local hackerspace lately, uh, we had an open data hackathon uh, related to the data that our municipality published on their website. So, uh, we, we talked with them so we could make the collaboration. So, we invited uh, a lot of girls to be part of it. And it was kind of, let's say, just... Um, uh, challenge maybe let's say uh, but it's not that it's our purpose because sometimes when they when it's a challenge they forgot to work as a team and they they just will work as individual and it's not so, uh, it's not something that we want to be part uh, how can you be part of an open source community and uh, let's say having that that spirit when they will be only individuals but mostly we try to have these challenges, but not with uh, just something similar. At least that's what we, we have done lately at our hackerspace for, uh, for these hackathons that we have done. Okay, actually I have also a question. So first uh, I would like to really thank you for bringing up this, uh, this uh, important topic. And I also profit to appreciate the fact that there's uh, many men <laughs> in the room because usually this is a topic that somehow is uh, often discussed among women as if it were a women problematic while it's much nicer to uh, when it's actually discussed uh, by men because it's a general uh, issue. So my question instead was uh, just a clarification on something that you showed. I didn't understand if in the, in the pictures of the schools and the conferences that you showed towards the end, you had a quota for the participants uh, or it was just uh, the, let's say, participants happened to be uh, more or less equally distrib distributed or more women. Um, you mean for the photo that was at the Mozilla? That yeah, the separated? Mozilla, you had more than uh, one, the Mozilla and then yeah. another one uh, afterwards, uh, which there were sev more or less, they were equally distributed or even with more women. Yeah, <coughs> no, actually um, it was an um, event that we did in the, in the hackerspace and everyone that wanted to submit a talk could join and the when the, yeah, or the workshop and when people started to register for the, for the event, uh, we witnessed and we saw that there were more women registered and th than men. So when everyone was part of the event and when it started, we thought that in the end of it, we asked everyone and we thought that in the end of it, it's something very nice and it's not very uh, common to see in such events having more uh, women than men. So it was actually just a photo of the event that we took like yeah, I mean, so there was no quota in the no, uh, no, no, uh, no, like from no. set by the organizers uh, in no. selecting the, the no, participants. No, no, no. It okay. was just a random uh, <laughs> photo that we thought that it would be nice to be taken, but we didn't we didn't know that that would be that number. We we're just lucky. And did you do, do you think that the fact that in the organizing committee there was a substantial uh, number of women uh, this did, did this impact uh, the fact that uh, the participants? Uh, we're actually more, uh, in, let's say, encouraged women participants to apply. 
Yeah, uh, when people come to the hackerspace and they see that the hackerspace is really diverse, and there are a lot of people coming from um, like men and women, um, they, people see each other and they feel very motivated when they see that they're friends or people that they know are part of the, uh, of the community. So it is a very good, I think that it's a very good way to even to, to motivate the others to, to become part of it. So I think it's like a, it's like a cycle that, of the motivation. One more question. Hi, uh, would you maybe elaborate a bit on practical steps uh, to encourage more participation in a small group, let's say 20 people in one city, versus a large group like thousands of people in Mozilla? Yeah. Um, so you mean to give more practical steps on how to increase the numbers of the women or? We got wrong. Okay. Uh, I mean, whether specific steps work better for small groups and other steps work better for large groups. Okay. So, um, when a community is in the first steps and there are just few people coming, I think that it's important to recruit people. Like, um, in the beginning when we started, the, from our experience, in the beginning uh, of the Open Labs, like, we wanted people to know about it. And we, we just, like, it was like, in the beginning, at, and to be honest, we're like, okay, let's go and let's give presentation on what is it, and to invite everyone. But when the community grow, it happens very naturally for Open Labs to have more women than men. But generally in communities, when they're in the first steps and when they grow, and when, for example, you see that there are more men, like obviously more men than women, then in this point of the community, you start to think on having some political uh, um, you know, steps to have more women or, and, and to do something even more practical. But this happens only in the phase when you already have a built, like um, a, a stable community because it will be hard in the beginning to like to, to call, for example, or, or to invite to have more women than men because it's still new and there is basically no one. But I think that beside this, the having the having like both uh, having uh, men and women in the in the community should also be part of uh, the basics of the manifesto of a community also like to have diversity and to have everything um, i mean this for the communities that starts from scratch and from the communities that they like they just go and they see that there are like more men than women but uh, open labs was not one of those examples because we're now trying to get we were, we're discussing and we just wanted to have more men now in, the, in, some, in some events and it was like very, it, it's, a vice, it's another situation. Perhaps it li in larger groups uh, one can have more organized uh, mentorship programs uh, or uh, yeah. perhaps uh, one could uh, yeah. make sure that you have, for example, uh, reference figures which are female, yeah. like uh, keynote speakers, uh, yeah, for example, uh, female, in large conferences. Yeah. Here. Thank you for the talk. Great to hear that Albania is, uh, you know, it has uh, developed a lot more, you know, in the past few years. And you know, being from Bulgaria, we hardly hear anything, you know, mm -hmm. we're practically neighbors. So yeah. uh, it's great to hear you've made such an amazing job, you know, promoting all that uh, initiatives and, and everything. Um, and uh, a small question. So uh, in your experience, you know, with a small group and small community, uh, what would you consider, uh, you know, mistakes or maybe, you know, what was, didn't work out well, you know, in the beginning when you were feeling your way kind of uh, building that community and uh, yeah. maybe advice to what, what other such communities could avoid doing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, something that really helped us in the beginning was that also the founders, like the people that were part of the, of, of the team, like those who founded the agrospace were women, like there were men and women together. So when people, when, when women come to the community, they see that uh, the, those who founded are not like 10 men and she's the only one there and she would feel weird. But uh, having like, if, even the organizing group, even the, the core group, having them diverse, like men and women helps a lot to give 
a very good and I think welcoming uh, environment for everyone who wants who wants to join. But actually, we, we we had also information for the Bulgarian community, and and yeah. we in fact we were there yeah, on November for a conference and, and we were we we saw, we saw how the situation was. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with rails, we saw that you have a really good community there. It's growing, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Further questions? Great. Thank you very much for the talk. I was wondering if you had any perspective on what to do when there is already a community that is problematic, creepy ourselves in positions of power, and so on. Um, I, I understand that if you're in a position starting out, then it is much easier to stop the rot. Do you have any perspective on cutting it out when it already exists? No. Okay. Um, so you mean on giving like any any advice for the I, communities I, I that mean, are already some there? Some communities are much worse than others. Do you have any insight into improving existing communities? Okay as opposed to building good ones from the start? In terms of involving more women, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that it's also, uh, from our experiences, I think that what really works in those cases and what is really good steps to grow and to have more women is to take them for, actually to, to give presentations on universities because it's a very, very good way to, to let them know and another thing is probably in your in your country you find it hard to have a lot of women studying informatics so if you go and give presentations in uh, IT university you might have more men but uh, you can um, also choose to go in a conference that is for example for social sciences or give presentations also in the university of human uh, of, I don't know, historic or geography and uh, let them know that even people coming from those backgrounds can also contribute in communities, like in any kind of way. It doesn't matter whether they know how to code or not. They can start and they give their contribution even by holding different talks on different kind of, of uh, fields that probably tech people cannot cover. They, they, they would be, I think that it will be a very good start for them to to come in the in the um, and and contribute in the community. So I think that beside having the diversity of like women and men, we should also have the diversity of the backgrounds of uh, women that are coming, like not only from a specific field, I think, but also from from the others. And also, um, we have had presentations even in high school, and there are uh, high school is like I think that it's a very good place because people there don't really know what to do with their lives. They're like, okay, what I'll do tomorrow? Like, what am, what am I going to study? So even if you go in the university as in high schools and tell them that tech is really good, or for example, coding is not meant for men, but it's also meant for women, and give them examples and give them cases where they can succeed, I think that, we, that they will feel very, very motivated to go for it. I came from um, a uh, non-technical background and uh, in the beginning everyone was like, no, don't go at the hacker space, like, I probably won't make it or like, what are you going to do there? But then after I realized that uh, having said this in my high school, like having people or my teachers saying this, that Christy, you can do it and you can go and contribute even in technical fields, that really motivates people, I think. Uh, something that Christy said about different backgrounds, I wanted to add that uh, what we did, for example, last year, uh, we had uh, Wikipedia weekend, uh, so we had uh, two days, Saturday and Sunday, dedicated only to Wikipedia, uh, mostly, not only for advanced, but uh, mostly for beginners and uh, intermediate, let's say, people. Uh, we, uh, before the, uh, organizing it, we went uh, to the University of uh, History, I guess, uh, in Albania, so we went to uh, the students and uh, we showed them, for example, that they could uh, be part of it. Uh, they could learn the first step, so how, uh, for example, uh, starting uh, opening an account, etc. And uh, they could uh, 
not only, for example, translate some articles related to history, but even creating new ones, because they know pretty well uh, their field, let's say, and they are really good at it. So they know the details and uh, they are the right persons to write articles about it. So you need to see uh, what kind of uh, field they are studying, and you can see what you can uh, go there and present to them. Because it, it doesn't matter, it's not that they need to, to do only coding. I mean, there are a lot of things that, that uh, they can do. But even at Wikipedia, they can start, for example, with the markdown language. So it's something that it, they can start with, so. Thank you. Great. Perhaps uh, just to add uh, one little bit uh, piece, just as a comment yeah. of data. Sometimes there is the idea that, uh, that there is the general idea that there is just fewer women who actually study scientific topics. But actually, at least in Europe, the European Commission has uh, delivered uh, she figures uh, research, uh, which is uh, publicly available, which is based on data for from 2014 for uh, until I think 2000. Uh, 15 and then they had an update and they were showing that actually while at, until the level at uni of university the level is more or less the same and the problem is much and much much more enhanced uh, when uh, uh, the level of responsibility is actually increased uh, so it's a higher it's a hierarchy uh, problem let's say which is not so evident yet at the level of uh, university degree and there's uh, several reasons from that, uh, which I mean, you also mentioned. And this is actually not even only related to uh, science, but I mean, it's uh, it was shown. It's shown as a mean for different countries, uh, and uh, also for different topics. Anyone else who has uh, comments, wants to open other points of discussion? Here. Hello. How is your experience with uh, recruiting in high schools? Um, is there a big interest and the participants are they staying in your community? And can you recruit uh, a div diverse community from a high school? Yeah. Um, in, um, in Albania, the high schools are um, divided on students that are with a science profile and those that are not that are with a, with a social profile. So going into the high school and having presentation is, um, was very successful to us. It, there were a lot of um, students coming from the high schools and then being part of the hackerspace because uh, one of the reasons is that they want to have a lot of new experiences related to the fields that they might be applying. Also students that are thinking to attend the universities for IT subjects they are very, like, they really, really want to go in those kind of communities to see how the things really work or whether the field that they want to choose in the future, whether it's exactly what they want or not. So it's the phase of the experiment. And there will be a lot of people that will be very interested on, on coming. And also, like, a, a very big plus, I must say, is also if you invite in the community and or in any kind of other internship and you say for example in the internship or in the company that if you work for example during the three months and if you do well during those three months we will um, we will keep you and you can also work for us so uh, having also this ad in in the presentations or in in the talk that you will be saying there it will be a very good also motivation for them to to come and to and to join Any other question? Okay. So the programs on uh, Fedora and Mozilla, for example, that you showed uh, at uh, more or less at the beginning, are they uh, open? Are they for uh, Albania only, or uh, they are uh, open to everyone to apply? No. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, both, both of them, both of the projects, you can be part of uh, different teams uh, that uh, depends on what teams you want to join. First of all, technical ones or non-technical ones. Even if you are a beginner uh, for the technical ones, for example, you will have someone uh, that will tell you uh, first steps, what you need to do, so you can get more into the community, even learning uh, <coughs> 
more things about uh, of what kind of contributions you you need uh, to uh, to do there. But it's not that uh, it's separated for beginners or not. So yeah, but I meant, is it only for uh, one country or is it no, for, for uh, worldwide? For everyone. It's for everyone. Okay. So would it be possible to have a collection like would you made available make available uh, either the slides or the collection of links so that you yes, there were sure. several that, that you mentioned I think that they will be posted in the okay. yeah we will website. post it uh, we will yeah. share it uh, on Twitter the link so great they can, can have it other comments in the meantime or questions doubts So we still have, I think, uh, five minutes. Anything that you so would like to add? I can say add? only yeah. something. Uh, so just don't forget uh, to say thank you to all the contributions that each person does. And of course, uh, don't forget uh, to share uh, what you heard, for example, today about the internships and share it with the other women that you know, because it would be great. Because it's the same that we did here. So just now you need to do the same. And thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs>